Morning guys. Sunday morning here in Rusty, Rhode Island. We're out here working on the golf service truck. So uh decided to do some lettering today. It's you know Sunday, I didn't want to get all dirty, make too much noise, so I'm doing myself a stencil paint job. And then I patina it using the uh, wood ash from the coal stove. Still in work of progress. I might uh, do like the shadowing on it with the black after this dries. But I got to get some more flat black to do that. But that's what I usually do is I just shadow the letters in flat black. And even that will be distressed. So to look like you know, it was lettered, you know, whatever, 70 years, 60 years ago, whatever the hell it was. That's the whole idea with this, is to get to make it look like, uh, I said, an old service truck. Almost ready to go back on. I got uh, two coats of white, and I've just been uh, distressing it a little bit with the uh, wood ash. So my process for this, basically, is I use stencils. <sighs> Something I learned in the military... We used to have to change the uh, camouflage every six months. So what we would do is we'd use the stencils, put some paint on the cardboard, you wet the sponge, and then kind of, you don't want to have it too wet so that you know, it doesn't run behind the stencil. You just want to have it kind of damp. And then you're just dabbing like this. And that's how I did this. And then once I uh, finished dabbing it, because the stencils have like the lines where they're connected. I go with the paintbrush and I just very carefully fill it in, make it look like the, uh, and I'm always dabbing. I'm not making strokes, I'm dabbing like this. Dab, 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 dab. And the reason I do that is it gives you a better look, I think, a better effect. What's gonna happen is, I'm going to rub the, uh, just rub the ash into it like that, now that it's uh, almost dry, and that's going to give it that uh, aged look, and then eventually, kind of like the teeth on the um, 54 rat rod, the rust will start to bleed through from behind, so I had the... Uh, coke truck and I had the coke signs and then down below it said uh, Fall River Bottling Company Fall River Mass and uh, people would come up to me telling me oh yeah I remember that bottling plant but it never existed Fall River Bottling Plant never existed it was just something I made up there was a coke plant in their distributorship in Fall River that and I remember as a kid, you could go to the window and look inside, and you'd see all the returnable bottles going along, and they'd get filled up, and, you know, the capper and all that, and you could watch the whole thing from the window. We used to go there when we were kids, we'd ride our bikes all the way. That was probably an eight-mile ride. And we'd go around to the back and beg the guys for free soda. <laughs> we'd also go to the potato chip plant and get all the steel potato chips, so we'd drink Coke and... Eat steel potato chips. All right, guys. Let's see what's going on here in Rusty, Rhode Island. It's Sunday morning. Connie's uh, laying on the couch. It's Sunday morning. I let her sleep, and I get out of her hair and come out here. She has to get up, you know, quarter to four every morning, which is why I'm up at quarter to four every morning, hoping I get out the door. Out from Rusty, Rhode Island. I hope you've been enjoying your weekend.